Welcome back to the Dirt Head Shed. This week we're going to try and bust out a cool paint job on an old set of wheels. All right, here's the deal. I'm getting ready for Easter Jeep Safari and I've got a set of tires showing up, but I want to make these wheels look cooler than they do right now. These are some method beadlocks. Whoa, that thing just hit me in the side fat. Ouch. These are a set of old uh, method beadlock wheels that I've had in various forms on a bunch of different rigs. And this latest paint job that I had done on them, I've never been really, I've never been very stoked on. So we're gonna scuff them up, shoot them a cool new color, clear them, gloss them all out with some poppies and see how it works out. Let's get busy. Come on in here to my sandpaper zone. Um, what are we gonna work with here? Something that's aggressive enough. That's 220. That's probably a little too aggressive. 400? Do I have enough stuff to work with? We got a little bit of Scotch Brite. We got some 400. We got a bunch of other like really fine grit stuff. Um, let's go ahead. Let's just start with this 220. It's already out. We get one of these Scotch Brite. And let's go start scuffing these up. So here's a little backstory on these wheels. These were the first ones I got for Mom's Spaghetti, which is my uh, 90 Ford pickup or 91 Ford pickup. I got these wheels forever ago, and Method hooked me up on the wheels, actually. They were super kind and helped me get going on that project. And uh, they were like, just paint them like a bright color so they show up. So the very first form of these wheels, they were sublime green, like the Mopar color from the 70s, sublime green, super bright. They looked so cool. And I ran them on there for quite a while. But then I put the wheels on, um, I ended up putting the wheels on my Mazda. And with the red truck, they kind of were a little obnoxious. Like the green wheels on the red truck was kind of wild. So I was like, one night I got a wild hair to paint them this gray and silver color. And they turned out pretty cool. The silver is actually this dupli-color base coat like I'm going to be using tonight. Um, and the gray is actually just primer that I cleared over. So I like primered these things gray. And then I, uh, I like fogged the silver around the outsides of it and then I clear coated them. So this gray, the darker gray in the middle is actually just primer with clear on it. So they look good, but they were, they were a little too boring um, in my opinion. So we're gonna kind of mix it up again. Now we're just going around the outside, the lip and areas like in the windows and we're just using Scotch-Brite. Typically, I only use red scotch bright. It's like a little more aggressive than the gray, but I don't have any of that right now, so we're using gray scotch bright. Cleaning any of the sand or the dirt and imperfections and trying to make sure that I just scuff off the the like shiny surface so the new paint has something to stick to. I'm not really trying to sand through the paint. I didn't get a chance to wash these before we even got started today. So we're like, we're cleaning off dirt and everything all in one shot right now. You gotta remember this thing is not a show car. This is a rock crawler. It just needs a little bit of pop. I know it's hard to believe, but the last time I painted these wheels, it was just like this, where I was like rushing to get them done to meet some ridiculous deadline. There's three. Let's 
sanded. We'll go work on number four. I feel like I'll probably get the sanding done tonight and we'll go ahead and paint these things in the morning. This one's nasty. I really screwed this one up. There's a, I don't know if you can see that, but there's all kinds of checking and cracking in the old paint. This one reacted terrible. It's going to take a lot of sanding. It's 11 o'clock Thursday night. I worked my day job for the week and uh, I'm off Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So we're going to try and bust out a bunch of work on this thing this weekend, which is good because mom spaghetti's going to East Jeep Safari and I need this thing to be dialed in. I've never taken it before. And after last year, blowing up my Jeep on the first obstacle, locking up the engine, I gotta kinda come out swinging, I guess. So I'm gonna get these things all done up. I got some tires showing. Check that out, four. Four are prepped. Tomorrow we paint. I'm back. That was a late night, but we got the wheels all sanded and prepped. Now it's just time to figure out what color I want to paint them. So let's go dig around and figure out what we're doing here. All right, here we have old Louis Vuitton and it is on bead locks that are just the machined stock finish. These are really cool looking. I like the way a bright silver wheel looks. Um, I also kind of like the way the silver bead lock ring looks versus like a black bead lock ring. So, uh, I've done both. I've had wheels that had the black beadlock ring as well, and they do look good, but it kind of makes the wheel look really small, and it does make the tire look bigger, which isn't really a bad thing. So we can't go back to that. That's kind of what I'm getting away from with these where I had painted them silver. So let's go figure out another color. Here we have Mom Spaghetti. This is what's getting the wheels. Um, it's kind of a hodgepodge of colors, which is cool. But if you look at it, I feel like these wheels are too dark. Um, they really aren't that dark of a silver or gray in person. But on the truck, it seems like the wheels just sort of kind of go away because wheels are almost always in the shadows, it seems. So I definitely want something brighter than that. Next up is Butter Jeep. This thing. I feel like has a really good look to it. I like the the bronze wheels and the yellow paint, and I think the contrast is good. Um, you can see when the light is on the wheels, they have plenty of color, but when it's in the shadows, they're kind of dark. So I do like bronze wheels, but I also want to go a little brighter than that. This is the paint that I pulled out originally. This is like a burnt orange metallic and a really bright yellow. The burnt orange metallic is a little bit dark um, for the wheels, so I was thinking about maybe mixing the two and creating like a brighter, a brighter metallic yellow kind of. So the wheels are pretty well prepped and we're kind of moving forward. I figured I'd talk about the paint that I'm going to use. These are Duplicolor Paint Shop paints. This is, um, it's basically a lacquer base coat. Um, and these things, they sell them, you can get this stuff at AutoZone or O'Reilly. Most of the auto parts stores that carry Duplicolor stuff have these paint shop quartz. This stuff is awesome. Like as far as base coat goes, it's really cool to be able to go and find like a base coat on the shelf and have it look as good as these do. But their clear coats are garbage. So don't use the Duplicolor uh, paint shop clear if you can avoid it. I'm going to be trying out something new with this Poppy's Patina branded uh, glossed out clear coat. So anyways, that's what we got here. This is uh, this stuff comes basically what they say is ready to shoot. Um, I still thin it out a little bit more sometimes depending on how it's looking. So we're going to we're going to go in here and uh, pop these open and see what color looks right. We need something that's bright something that's sort of sparkly so that it stands out and something that's made out of these colors because this is what I've got. God, that's terrible. 
This champagne gold is just boring. I don't remember why I bought that stuff. Holy cow, that stuff is really bright. All right, let me grab a stick and we'll start mixing these things up. Typically, every time I mix colors together, you just end up with brown. And if I end up with sparkly brown, that's kind of okay. Red and yellow makes orange, right? My neighbor AJ is probably sitting at his computer yelling at me right now. Going, don't do it, Dave. You're just gonna make ugly colors. That's all right. Ooh, that's kind of cool. Sparkly mustard. I'm all for sparkly mustard. I mean, I, <clears throat> I like weird colors and that one's definitely weird. I think we found it. I think this is it. Let's see here. So what I've got is this sort of sparkly yellow mustard color. That copper had a ton of pearls and flakes in it. So I think it should go on and have kind of a cool shine to it. Or it'll just look like crap and that's fine too. Ooh, get my super duper cheapy paint gun. Yeah. This gun here, bought it at yeah. Napa. This was like 70 bucks for two, a two spray gun kit. And this thing's actually been pretty good. Let me grab some strainers. We'll, we'll load the gun with paint and we'll shoot some base coat on there. I assume this gun is clean enough to use. I should have cleaned it before I put it away last. You want to use a strainer. These are just a paper basic filter that you get from the paint store or you can buy them in the uh, in the paint aisle at like your auto parts store and you want to use a strainer basically that this will get out any of the like larger chunks or you know like when i was transferring paint if there's like dry paint around the lid or whatever those little chunks it'll filter all those out before you put them in the gun So that should be clean enough to shoot. That is a weird color, man. Holy cow, baby poop green. Here we go. Looks like Puddin's square body that he turned into a short bed. All right, let's, uh, let me get a respirator and we'll shoot this wheel. The wheel is sanded, good enough. I got my cardboard behind it. I taped off my valve stem. Uh, I probably should have pulled the valve stems, but I didn't. All right, here we go. Let's see what happens. I love it. Oh my gosh, it's great. It's like beauty gold. All right, let that sort of tack. Really light first coat. Sweet. We're, ah, we're doing it now. Oh, I love color. Painting stuff is fun. Black wheels, lame. Cool, doo-doo gold, good. A little ladder here. The cardboard trick is where it's at. Every time I get a frozen pizza and it comes on one of those pieces of cardboard, I'm like, ooh, I need to paint some wheels. Again, we're just going for the essence of a good job. It doesn't have to be the best. If you pull the trigger on the paint gun like halfway, it just blows air. Kind of clean your surface before you go and blast it. I'm still borrowing AJ's heat lamp. This thing is awesome. It's a uh, ultraviolet and it basically heats up the metal so that it draws the solvents out of the paint and helps it dry faster. So that's not necessary, not 100% necessary, but it's really helping out. I've got two more wheels ready to go. We still got a ton of paint, so we're good to go. This is the one that was super bad with all the cracks in the paint. Curious to see how it turns out. 
think this one's going to be really important to uh, do a few light coats on it. This one. It's really difficult to get paint in all those little windows. You just kind of do the best you can. If you try too hard, you end up running. We don't want that. I got the first coat on all five of them and I got enough in the gun to do another pretty good coat on all five. I think we're good to go. There we go. Alright. Let's do this. I tightened up the fan. You can do a fan spray, basically a fan that's spread out really far, or you can close it up. And I've kind of got it closed in a little bit right now so that I'm not wasting quite as much paint in the air. And I'm kind of directing it more to where I want it. That goes there. That goes there. Oh, it's getting warm in here now. The heater is kicking. You need to be like 65 degrees and above for all this paint stuff to do its job. Which is pretty difficult to keep the shop that warm. Because it was like 25 degrees last night. So, I think the shop's right around 50 right now. But that heat lamp over there is the saving grace. I think the base coat has all set up good enough to where we can start doing the clear. I did a quick clean out on the gun, cleaned my mixing cup back out, and now it's time to mess with this Poppy's glossed out clear coat. I met the guys from Poppy's out at the drag race in Tucson when I took the Mustang 2 down there. And I had questions about the, the like wipe on clear coat that I'm sure you're more familiar with. They do, they do like patina style wipe on clear coat. They do satin clear coats. Um, but it turns out they also have like legit, uh, like auto body grade glossy clear. So I'm going to give it a shot. I typically just buy inexpensive clear from the, uh, from the paint store. I'll usually go and find out like what they have that they sell a ton of to body shops and just buy that. So this is just a, I don't know what you'd call it. 2K four to one urethane clear coat. I love trying new stuff, especially when it's from guys that are like enthusiasts in the market that we're in. Like there's plenty of cool products out there. Let's see, we're going about four and a half. There's a lot of cool products out there, but when you can find a product that's made by a company that's actually out there at the drag races and at the car shows and enjoying this stuff like we are, it's always cool to support those companies. They might seem like a big deal, but I'm sure Poppy's is a small fish in a really big pond as far as like competing with Sherwin-Williams and PPG and companies like that. Let's see if this stuff's good. That should be enough clear for the four wheels. If we're gonna like try and figure out how much I spent on painting these wheels, I'll bet you probably have $5 worth of sandpaper. Granted, I'm using stuff that I already had. I probably have five bucks worth of sandpaper. 
the amount of paint that I use, those quarts are 27 bucks each, and I used probably a half a quart total. So 13, 14 bucks in paint. And then this amount of clear out of a whole gallon, we're probably painting these four or these five wheels for like right around $50. Like, that's pretty cool. Yeah, it's some work, but they're gonna look awesome for the amount that we have invested. It looks good, it's very clear. I'm just gonna go ahead and run all of it. Pretty stoked. Let's see how these turn out. I love this color, oh my gosh. Makes me like bummed that this color has been sitting in my cabinet for years and I've never figured it out. Get the fan back, we're sitting at 50 PSI, it's pretty high, but clear likes a lot of pressure. Wheels are kind of hard because you end up spraying them and you can't fix any mess ups that you have because you can't really go in and like color sand and buff on a wheel so you gotta like you gotta wet them out pretty good for them to look nice and smooth kind of a heavy first coat i'm gonna let these tack for like 15 and then we're gonna just run a really heavy second cut and hope we don't run them. So this ultraviolet lamp that I'm using is like super awesome to be able to borrow it. But you know what's cool? I thought they were like auto body only. Like you had to spend a ton of money and get them through a paint supply store. But I actually was when I was on a show for Motor Trend, I went to Home Depot and I bought an ultraviolet light for like a hundred bucks to help speed up doing body work. And it worked awesome. It goes really fast once you uh, get past the sanding part. Sanding's the worst. I can tell you right now, I made up way too much clear. I also mixed up way too much paint, so. We might be actually painting these, if I didn't, if I did my mixing right, we'd probably be painting these five wheels for like 30 bucks. We will let this cure for like 15 minutes and we'll blast another coat. Let's go look at the wheels. There's a couple little things going on. This one is looking really good. You can kind of see this one over here has a pretty bad spot. You can see right there where the paint is lifting. And that is caused, that's caused from using like improper primer and base coat. It's most likely the gray primer that's under there. And that is, uh, that's just a rattle can primer. And typically you don't want to use rattle can product with like a good catalyzed product on top of it. And you can get some problems like that. But considering how much has happened to these wheels in such a quick amount of time, I think we're doing good. I'm gonna go ahead and lay down the final coat of clear on this and we'll call these things done here pretty soon. The proper way to do this would have been having these wheels sandblasted. That would give you a really nice surface to start with. But we didn't do that. Yeah, there's a few problems where I sanded through the clear and got into that, uh, the old primer. And it's, uh, it's going to cause some lifting and stuff here and there. I am likely to run the crap out of this right now because I'm so excited. 
I'm just putting too much paint on, too much clear. All right. Got to call it good enough. Sweet. That's my favorite color on them yet. They are definitely glossed out. I dig it. These are going to look great. We'll let these tack up and go check them out in the sunlight. We actually have some today, so it'll be cool to see how they look. Oh, that's cool. It definitely has some green hue to it. I love it. There it is. I think that was a pretty cool project. It could have been done with rattle cans and it would probably look good, but I really like the way heavy gloss looks on those wheels. I think it's totally worth taking the time, spending a little bit of money and using a 2K clear coat. That's it for this dirt head shed. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm gonna be doing a ton of work on Mom's Spaghetti getting it ready for Easter Jeep Safari. So there may be an extra video or two coming up. Um, and we're closing in on 100,000 subscribers. So I thank you guys so much. If you haven't subscribed, please go over and do it. It'll be awesome when we get to that 100K mark. Thanks so much. We'll see you guys next time.